Greetings everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of Hair Talks by Terra Medical. My name is Dr. Joshua Chong, and in this episode, we're gonna start on a two-part series on how hormones actually affect your hair. In this first part of the series, we're going to be talking specifically about androgens or male hormones and how they play a crucial factor in whether or not you're experiencing male or female pattern hair loss. So to touch on a very basic aspect of hair follicle physiology or how hair follicles work, we have to imagine the hair follicle in its different phases of growth. Let's picture the hair follicle in its resting stage. It's going to start entering the growth phase or the androgen phase and the bulb of the hair follicle is going to start multiplying and creating more cells that contribute to this nice thick hair shaft that extends out from the skin and grows longer and longer over two to six years. And this phase of androgen actually consists of six subphases, the most important of which is phase six, which is the lengthening process. The longer you can keep your hairs in Energen 6 will result in thicker, coarser and longer hair being able to grow. Hormones can influence this part of the hair cycle in many ways and today we are going to touch specifically on how androgens affect it. Male hormones tend to shorten the Energen 6 part of the cycle. It resultantly creates a shorter, thinner, less durable strand of hair that falls out earlier than your normal hair. However, this phenomenon is only particular to specific areas of scalp. Not everybody will experience the same kind of thinning when exposed to male hormones. Certain areas of hair are more prone to this. For example, the hairline and crown area in male patients, also the dome area of the scalp in female patients, tend to have a higher sensitivity to male hormones. And the culprit that is most of the time blamed for this miniaturizing effect on the hair follicle is dihydrotestosterone or DHT. And this becomes an important topic of discussion when we are talking about treating male or female pattern hair loss. DHT is produced in normal amounts when testosterone is converted via an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. This enzyme actually adds on hydroxyl groups to testosterone and makes it more potent and this increase in potency actually causes the hair follicle to shrink amongst other effects on the body. It's important at this point to reiterate that DHT is not the only factor in causing hair follicle miniaturization but accounts for a lot of the reasons as to why a hair follicle might be miniaturizing over time. So how does DHT actually affect hair follicles at the the very molecular level. The hydrotestosterone actually enters the cell nucleus and creates a cascade of effects where certain harmful proteins are created resulting in microinflammation that surrounds the hair follicle causing the hair follicle stem cells not to be as active as before resulting in the hair follicle becoming weaker and losing its strength over time. So while DHT has a normal range in people, it does fluctuate from time to time throughout the day. But there's certain things that have been proposed to increase DHT levels in your body. It's not something we routinely test for because if we do see the phenomenon of hair thinning in men or women, we do suspect that DHT has some kind of role to play in it, but also considering other factors that are contributing. So what are these things that are contributing to an increase in DHT? One of them would be poor sleep or stress. So this increases the cortisol levels over time and chronic insomnia or chronic stress will cause high cortisol levels or high cortisol levels to convert into breakdown products that mimic male hormones or mimic androgens. These will further be degraded down the pathway into testosterone or into other secondary compounds and finally into DHT. A certain diets also have been implicated in causing DHT increases such as diets that are overly fatty, diets that contain excessive dairy, diets that are sometimes nutrient lacking or high in MSG though these claims have not been completely founded. The other very important aspect of your diet is that zinc can be deficient in someone's diet especially in vegetarians because zinc is largely found in meat or fish but can also be found in nuts and seeds and legumes. Now zinc 
plays a very important role in modulating male hormones. DHT being an important male hormone, zinc also helps to modulate its function. So having enough zinc in your diet is quite crucial. Lifestyle choices such as being sedentary or exercising can also affect your hormone levels to various degrees. But when we're talking about androgens, we're really talking about people who really hit the gym hard. We're talking about people who do powerlifting training for competitions. And, and this actually sends signals to the central nervous system to release more testosterone. And we can see large testosterone spikes when we measure the blood levels immediately after a workout. And where does this testosterone go? Testosterone has to break down into its metabolites and one of its major metabolites is DHT. Also associated with the powerlifting and bodybuilding arena are people who use bodybuilding supplements and exogenous steroids that help to improve muscle growth. There have been studies that show that excessive intake of whey protein supplements, especially whey isolates, or high dose BCAA or branched chain amino acids, as well as creatine monohydrate, has an increase in the level of testosterone after a workout. It goes without saying that using anabolic steroids, which are actually testosterone derivatives or synthetic testosterone, will also increase the level of male hormone damage to your hair from the girls. On the flip side, a low degree of activity or not being exposed to enough sunlight, being chronically indoors as sedentary and chronic malnutrition can also lead to low levels of testosterone, which can also interestingly be associated with hair thinning and hair loss. Now the list of things that can be associated with an increase in DHT, you know, endless. We're talking about many hundreds of different kinds of anabolic steroids, different lifestyle choices, many different occupational roles or habits of training and exercise can all lead to an increase in DHT levels. But ultimately, it's whether the genetics of your scalp are sensitive to the effects of DHT on your hair follicle. The treatment that we usually prescribe involves lowering DHT levels at the hair follicle. So that can be in the form of an enzyme blocker such as finasteride, or sometimes in ladies, we use something that blocks the hormone receptors in the nucleus of the cell called spironolactone. So by using these androgen inhibiting agents, we are actually reducing the enemy to the hair follicle, preventing it from going through that miniaturizing stage. And when these treatments go on for long enough, you're going to start noticing a few effects. Firstly, you're going to see that the hair loss is reduced, less shedding of thin, small, weak hairs or miniaturized hairs. You're going to see the regrowth of some of the hairs getting longer, thicker, coarser. And thirdly, you're also going to see that more scalp is going to get covered. Now, apart from prescribing medications to stop the DHT from assaulting the hair follicles, it's also important to remove any external causes that are increasing the levels of DHT. So if you're somebody that's already using a lot of whey protein, consider cutting it down. If you're somebody who's using creatine monohydrate, think about stopping it. We have to balance between our hair goals and our physique goals. And certainly, please do not use anabolic steroids, especially if they're not monitored by an endocrinologist. These can cause lots of problems to your hormonal system or your endocrine system downstream. So we've touched on quite a bit about how male hormones have affected the hair follicle and how it's been traditionally treated as the major cause of hair thinning in both men and women. However, there are a whole bunch of other hormones that are circulating in your body that could be implicated in hair loss as well. And that's a topic that we're going to be discussed in our next session of Hair Talks by Paramedical. So stay tuned, and if you like this content, click like and subscribe. Leave any questions in the comment section below, and I look forward to seeing you next time.